The Lab 8 deals with filters and impedance matching. In this lab, we're going to build two circuits. The first one's a low-pass Butterworth filter. A Butterworth filter is a filter where the coefficients are picked such that the transfer function has a flat pass band. This particular circuit was taken from a table in the ECE402 course. It consists of two capacitors and two inductors, so it's going to be a fourth order circuit. When the frequency is very low, the caps are open and the inductors are short, and we're going to pass the signal. We're going to have a source resistance and a load resistance of the same value. As the frequency gets high, this becomes a short, this becomes an open, this becomes a short, and this becomes an open. So you have four different ways that we're blocking the signal from getting from the input to the output. Now this particular filter is normalized in that it has a corner frequency at one radian per second and uses one ohm resistors for the source and the load. Now given these constraints and wanting this frequency at one radian per second, these are the values of the L's and C's that would produce a transfer function that when you plot its body plot has a flat pass band and a 3 dB frequency of one radian per second. Now in the ebook, we talked about denormalizing and frequency scaling, so let's do that. Now to denormalize, we're gonna multiply every resistor by a factor of M, and likewise for every impedance, so we're gonna multiply the inductance by M, and we're gonna divide the capacitance by M, because the impedance is one over SC. Now we can frequency scale, if we wanna make our F naught not one radian divided by two pi, but 65 megahertz, and a 50 ohm load. So our omega naught then is going to go from 1 radian per second to 2 pi times 65 megahertz, which is 408.4 mega radians per second. And our scale factor for magnitude is going to be 50. So our capacitor that was 0.7654 now becomes 37.5 picofarads. The 1.8478 capacitor becomes 91 picofarads. The 1.8478 Henry inductor becomes 226 nanohenries. And then lastly, the point 7654 Henry inductor becomes 94 nanohenries. I've laid out the circuit in Ansoft Circuit Designer showing my Butterworth filter and then my 50 ohm load and 50 ohm source impedance. I want to show what the voltage transfer function looks like. So using Ansoft Designer, there is a command called VGSL, which stands for the voltage gain from source to load. And this is what the transfer function looks like. At low frequencies, with the inductor shorted and the capacitors open, we have a voltage divider of a half, which would be a minus 6.02 dB. And I put the marker over here, and you can see that the corner frequency is at 65 megahertz. And you can also see here that the low frequency gain is minus 6.02 dB. The body plot that was shown on the previous page can also be displayed on the network analyzer. Besides doing body plots, it can also plot scattering parameters, and we're going to be measuring the scattering parameters of our filter. One particular one is S21, which is also called insertion loss, and this specifies how much a filter attenuates a signal that's trying to go through it. And this is what the network analyzer should look like. This is the magnitude of S21. I put the marker here at 65 megahertz, and then a plot of the angle. In Ansoft Designer, when you get to minus 180, it just goes back up to plus 180 and continues the graph. It would be shifting this straight down if you were to plot it on a larger scale for the y-axis. Another S parameter we're going to plot in lab is S11. It's also called return loss. It's a measure of how much power is reflected back to the source. You can here I've marked the 65 megahertz point, and here's the magnitude of S11. And again, you should see similar plots on the network analyzer. Another filter parameter that the network analyzer can measure, a thing called a group delay. And this is the plot of the derivative of the phase angle with respect to frequency. Now, group delay specifies how much of a signal is delayed in time as it passes through a filter. If the group delay is not constant in the passband, then a pulse that's applied to the input will be distorted at the output. If it is constant, then you simply have just a time delay. This is handy for digital circuits. It uses different parameters for the filter. Let's take a look at what our filter does when we plot group delay. Again, I'm plotting this in Ansoft Designer, and you can get the group delay under the analysis setup box. We're not seeing a constant group delay, so a pulse passing through our filter would not just be simply delayed, but also delayed and distorted. Not critical for what we're doing, but I thought I'd show you another filter parameter that we talk about in filter theory. In lab eight, we're gonna to continue to use the spectrum analyzer and the network analyzer to evaluate RF circuits. The concepts covered in this lab are a low pass Butterworth filter, magnitude and frequency scaling, scattering parameters, and designing a matching network for an antenna. The laboratory techniques covered are calibrating the network analyzer for two port measurements, de-embedding the test fixture, measuring scattering parameters, and lastly measuring VSWR. This is a two-week lab, and for the second part of the lab, you'll need to review the notes on designing matching networks. We're going to do this for an antenna.
This is the material needed for lab number eight. 